All right, one more company before lunch, uh, but you're going to want to see this one. Uh, First Majestic Silver, I, I believe this is the biggest company that's here today. This is a $2 billion market cap silver producer. 51% of uh, their revenue uh, comes from silver, so it is, a, I suppose, technically a primarily silver producer. Ticker symbol is uh, F. R on the main board in Toronto and FMV over here in Frankfurt. So Keith, please take it away. And uh, AG on the New York Stock Exchange. Right. Welcome everyone. Uh, thanks for coming to my presentation today. Hope you're enjoying Kai's conference. We're happy to be here. Uh, recognize a lot of faces. We've been coming to Germany since 2004 and at one point uh, Back in 2006, actually 25% of the company was owned in Germany. So I know this market very well. Today we have 10% of the company uh, owned in Germany. Just, you know, interesting stat if something, if that's of interest to you. Uh, as a, um, our revenues this year are about $600 million. We got 4,000 employees. It's a little bit tough to talk about this company in a matter of 12 minutes, but I'll do, do my best. I have to talk about silver. All of you know me as the triple digit silver guy. I, I predicted that back in 2010. Uh, it hasn't happened yet, <laughs> but hopefully it will over the next couple of years. I'm, I think 2024 and 2025 are going to be pretty exciting years in, in the resource sector. Interestingly you know, enough, you know, in, in 2020, this uh, silver consumption broke through a billion ounces for the first time. The miners produced about 830 million ounces that year. 2021, we consumed um, uh, a little over a billion again. 2022, we're now over 1.2 billion ounces of consumption. Ex uh, anticipated consumption for silver in 2023, somewhere around 1.4 billion ounces. The miners are not producing more silver. It's actually dropping. According to the Silver Institute, silver production in 2023 will be approximately 6% lower than it was in 2022. Pretty amazing. Some of the uh, um, other uh, comments about silver, you know, it's, uh, we, you know, one thing that differentiates First Majestic is really we're 100% dory producer. We produce uh, all our mines, uh, uh, well, the three mines in Mexico are all dory producers, and that really uh, differentiates us from the rest of the mining space. You know, we have to talk about CSR, ESG is very important. You know, we, you know, miners invented ESG. Uh, you know, we didn't call it ESG back in the 90s or the early 2000s. We call it CSR, Community Social Relations. But it, it's something that's very important to me. Even when I was running First Quantum back in the late 90s, you know, we were financing uh, schools and, and, and soccer uh, teams and, you know, and so on and so forth. We do the same in Mexico. It's our responsibility. We run these towns. Without these mines, these towns would simply not exist. All the schools, the elementary schools, the infrastructure. You know, if there's a water pipe in town, who, who gets the phone call? The government doesn't get the phone call. The G GM gets the phone call. We go in there with our tractors, dig a hole and fix the pipe. That's what we do. And uh, it's very important for us to have that relationship with our communities. And uh, we have very good relationships with all the communities we're active in. So the three dots here are the producing mines. Uh, we have one development project or exploration slash development project in Nevada. Um, you can see the breakdown in our production. San Dimas being the biggest, uh, Santa Elena being the second largest, and uh, Lincoln Town, of course, being the smallest one. Our guidance, uh, around 25 million silver equivalent ounces for the year. Um, and uh, uh, you can see the costs there are quite reasonable. You see Jared Canyon is kind of moving that cost up on an average. We ended up shutting that mine down in Q1 due to some issues there, and that was really what dri was driving those costs. But if you look at Mexico as a standalone, you see those are very, very reasonable costs for, for a silver mine. And as a result, of course, our, our CapEx dropped, uh, and this is really the primary reason why we decided to take a step back uh, from our investment in Nevada. Um, you know, I could s sit here and talk about, you know, for 30 minutes about um, our decisions surrounding that uh, closure, but uh, we have record investment on exploration and development going on right now, and look, look for our guidance in 2024. We'll be putting uh, guidance out in uh, January, and you'll be seeing similar type numbers uh, in 2024. 
One of the exciting things I think most of you already know, um, we've been selling silver to the retail market in the form of bars and coins since 2008. And, and this business has grown quite substantially. One thing that we ran into though was um, a bottleneck of the mints. Uh, the mints just simply could not supply the metal that we needed uh, to, to fill the need from our customer base. So we decided why not open our own mint? So uh, we've started that process. We we're hoping to get it up and running by November. We had some permitting issues in Nevada, that's in Las Vegas is where it's being opened. Uh, we now expect to do our first uh, uh, pours in uh, um, probably January. But it's pretty exciting. We expect to see about a 300% growth in silver sales as a result of this mint. Uh, ultimately, we would love to see all our production go through this uh, facility. And why do I do that? Or one of the reasons why I do this. As you have all heard me speak in the past about this manipulation of the silver price you know, by the banks, our, assuming we produce about 12 or 13 million ounces of pure silver, that silver is leveraged about 300 to one. So the banks know that our silver is coming to them. So they'll take a position against our production in the tune of about 400 million ounces. So if we can take that silver out of the banking system and put it directly into the retail marketplace, which is our intention with this mint, that's going to take 400 million ounces of paper silver out of the market, which is huge. And you know, as we all know, uh, silver in the paper markets trade about a billion ounces a day. And if we can be a part of taking some of that away, uh, I think that's going to help. I'm going to spend time as well talking to other executives of other silver companies to try to get this mint filled with silver from other mining companies uh, in, in the southern uh, United States. And many of you know who those are. I don't have a lot of time to get into the assets. Um, San Dimas uh, is our biggest mine, well known, been in production for 300 years. Um, as you can see, the grades there are, are quite, quite good. Um, we did see some cost elevation over the last couple of quarters, which is now reversing. We're changing from one vein to another, um, and it caused some extra dilution, so the cost, of course, went up. But um, uh, that's in Q4. We're going to have a pretty uh, more normalized quarter, and into 2024, you'll see cost uh, drop there as well. Very prolific area. Uh, I think we have like 10 drill rigs active here right now. Um, this, this mine will, pre will be producing for decades into the future. Santa Elena has really been a bright spot for us. Uh, this is where a lot of our investment and in capital has gone over the last five years. We've tripled the production here uh, since we bought it in, back in 2015. You can see again the grades are quite good. Uh, costs are very nice as well. Um, and, and look for 2024 being very similar uh, to, to this. It's a, this one's, uh, the San Dimas mine was 50-50 gold silver, all Dory as I said earlier. This is more like 60 gold, 40 silver. Very prolific part of Mexico. This part of Sonora is called the Carlin Trend of Mexico um, because it's just so rich. Uh, this property is over 100,000 hectares in size, uh, 250,000 acres. It's an enormous property. There's geology all, all over the place. We have nine drill rigs active. Um, this particular um, uh, ore body was discovered back in 2016, and this is where all, all the production has been coming over the last little while. We're actually running a drift, and I don't have a pointer here, but now we're running a drift where that arrow says pointed. We're going to be running a drift along that structure and be drilling that at depth because we're expecting to see another ore body over in that area. So that's going to be happening uh, throughout 2024. Look in Tata, uh, this has been in our portfolio since 2005. 100% silver mine. This is our only mine that's actually producing 100% silver. Uh, we did have a cost elevation in Q3, as you can see by this slide. Uh, we had a well collapse, unfortunately. Uh, um, this, this mill requires, of course, well, all mills require water, but uh, the water for, for this mill uh, is, is coming from a couple of wells. And one of those wells collapsed at the end of Q2. Uh, so we saw a little bit of cost inflation in Q2, but it really hit us in Q3. Uh, Q4 will be much the same because this is a deep well. 
It's being uh, uh, collared right now as we speak. Uh, it won't be finished until around Christmas time. And by Q1, uh, you're going to see cost drop and, well, production go up and cost drop as a result of that uh, addition of the new, new well. Jared Canyon, I uh, won't spend a lot of time on this, but um, I, I get we still get questions about Jared. Obviously, it was a gold mine or is a gold mine in Nevada, 3 million ounces of gold. And this mill is an amazing mill. The replacement cost of this mill is something in the order of $350 million. Uh, it's, it's one of three roasters in the entire state of Nevada. It's a very, very strategic asset. Uh, we're getting approached by all kinds of uh, groups wanting to get access to this roaster. Uh, most of the ore uh, in northern Nevada requires roasting. Uh, so this is a very important uh, uh, mill for, for those who uh, have ore, ore to sell or to, J, to uh, JV with us. Um, uh, we're looking to get it turned back on by 2026, uh, but there will be some guidance coming out in early 24 and, and throughout 2024 uh, talking about this asset. But it's very strategic for us. It's a big asset and uh, something that we're going to be focusing on in the next couple of years. And this is some geology. You know, our geos are quite excited. This project is quite large. Um, as I was told earlier, it was three, sizes, three times the size of Manhattan. Um, and as many, much of this has not been drilled. So our geos have some pretty interesting geological views on uh, finding an elephant. And that's really one of the things we're also going to be focusing on over the next uh, one and two years. We're happy to uh, uh, talk about our LNG plant. Uh, this is uh, two of our mines are running on LNG, uh, the Lincoln Tata and Santa Elena. This is an enormous LNG plant to 24 uh, gigawatts of power, uh, supplying over 90% of the electricity for the mill, uh, something that we're quite proud of. And uh, we're always looking for ways to reduce our environmental impact uh, uh, to the region. And this is you know, obviously a, a, a big, uh, um, a coup for us to get this done. And our liquidity, um, very strong balance sheet, you know, lots available for us to do what we need to do. And if, whether it's investments or whether it's M&A, we've got the capital and the financial means to do it. And you can see our costs are dropping, which is nice to see. And this is tough. You know, this has been a very, very high inflationary environment. And it's, it's tough to bring costs down. You know, credit goes to the team. We've had some layoffs. You know, we've had to do layoffs due to the uh, strengthening peso and, 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 and so on. So we've made some moves to accomplish this. Uh, so we're quite proud of seeing these reductions. See the shareholder breakdown. Market cap is a little under $2 billion. Again, lots of liquidity, lots of cash. Our dividend, pay 1% of our revenue. So the whole idea behind that was to fix it to the price of silver. So as our revenues go up, our revenues this year will be somewhere around $600 million. And uh, uh, so, you know, it's a modest dividend, but it's, it's nice to get. I quite like getting it myself. And that's it, you know, just some rules of silver investing and uh, if there's time for questions. I assume there's some questions. Um, yes, sir. Uh, kids, do you see uh, uh, with your own uh, mint uh, the dividend going kind of for the company or not? Different, which for the company? For the, if you have your own mint operational, mm -hmm. do you see the dividend uh, going up there for the company? Oh. <laughs> well, you know, <laughs> I, I can't really comment on that. I, I, I love to get the dividend up, but it's more to do with silver prices than anything. Uh, you know, we, you know, we got reasonable cash flows today, but, uh, you know, I like to see stronger cash flows and I like to see the balance sheet improve even further uh, before we started to, uh, you know, pay additional dividends. Yeah, but yeah, if you have your uh, uh, own silver production fully uh, selling to the market, mm -hmm. then it should yeah. be uh, more profitable, I mean. Mm -hmm. Oh, very much so. And, uh, if, if, it, if it all happens according to plan, you can guarantee that we will be increasing the dividend. But I can't, I can't really just, I can't promise that, you know, today. Um, how do you explain the underperformance of silver uh, compared to gold in the last three, 
<laughs> well, it's a paper market. You know, that's the problem. And uh, you know, every time silver gets up to, you know, whatever. Look, look at how many times it tested 24 just recently, and uh, you know, it, it battled to get through 24. And uh, now, finally today, it looks like it, or yesterday, it finally got through 24. Hopefully, it holds. But you know, if you're if you're if you're J.P. Morgan and you just sold 50 million ounces to Sony to for them to produce their televisions, and you're obligated to deliver Sony their silver for the next year. You know, it's not in your best interest to let silver go over the price you just sold your silver at to Sony. Or could it be that uh, silver is losing its, uh, its um, monetary status? I don't look at silver as money. Um, I look at silver as a strategic metal. Um, I think it's a critical metal and a strategic metal. I don't think silver will ever become money. That's my view. I know a lot of people think I'm crazy for saying that, but that's, you know, gold is money. Silver is a strategic metal. Something that we need as the human race to do anything that we need to do. If we're going to go green, we're going to clean up the environment. If we're going to want to keep using computers and televisions and cell phones and, and, uh, and, and electric cars and solar panels and even nuclear plants require a ton of silver. People don't think about that. All well, these wars require a ton of silver. You know, although why, why do you think silver consumption is where it's at today? The miners can't produce anymore. The miners have limited out. We've had 850 million ounces, 820 million ounces of silver production now for almost a decade. And there's no mines coming on, online. There's mines dropping, coming off of line. So that's why I say it's a very strategic and critical, critical mineral that uh, you, know, you have to have in your portfolio. Because silver prices will go higher, but the paper market needs to be broken or um, you know, the big traders in New York who, who, de who decide to lean in with, with their, you know, paper uh, silver will decide, okay, well, maybe we're wrong. Maybe we have to uh, let the price go up because they can't get silver because us, we as a mining company, aren't delivering it to them. Any more questions? Good. Is the LNG plant exclusive to your company? The LNG, the liquid natural gas plant? Yeah. Mm -hmm. It is, yeah. Is there any plans of perhaps using it for other local entities? Uh, well, it's, you know, we, we need all that power. Mm. So, you know, at San Dimas, um, we have a, um, a hydro dam. So that hydro dam supplies power to us, but it also supplies power to the community. So we maintain that dam, but, you know, we keep the lights on in the community as well using that same power. Those are some, yeah, those are some great questions. Uh, lunch is being served as, as we speak. I do have one more question, though, uh, Keith, regarding marketing. As you said, you have a strong cash position. You're generating your own money, um, but you keep marketing. Why? <laughs> well, we are a public company. You know, if, if uh, we have a lot of shareholders here in this room, <clears throat> if I stop marketing, then why would a shareholder own our company? Because you're generating cash? I don't think that's good enough. <clears throat> there's, a lot, there's lots of public companies out there. And if, if public, you know, if manage, management of public companies don't go in front of people, don't go in front of their shareholders, then why would shareholders want to own them? That's my view. If Elon Musk just stopped doing his interviews, if, he, if Elon Musk disappeared into the, into the bush and you never heard or saw him again, would you still own Tesla? I wouldn't even while he's marketing it, but that's a different thing. <laughs> well, I'm just, I just use that as an example. You know, a, lot of, a lot of people own Tesla because of Elon Musk, right? So, Good point. Yeah. yeah. Thank you, Keith. I appreciate your time and uh, enjoy lunch, everybody. Great. Thank you. Thank you.